What's going on Pixar and Wally fans? Dan Taylor from DanThePixarFan.com back once again and today I have for you my detailed hands-on look at Mattel's brand new soon to be released Wally figure as part of their premium collector Pixar Spotlight series line. This is the third and final part of my Mattel Pixar Spotlight series reviews, the epic grand finale at least for now until the next wave, following Kevin from Up and Woody from Toy Story. So be sure to check out those review videos if you haven't already. Right away, just looking at Wally in the box here, I can tell you that this is without question the best and most comprehensive Wally figure in this scale and price point. Between all the printed weathering details, the sheer amount of articulation he has, and the many included accessories, this figure is what Wally fans have been wishing for for years now. Now that I've seen and handled it in person, I can confidently say you will not be disappointed. Wally is number 02 in Mattel's Spotlight series, and I'm so glad this box continues that classy varnish numbering system that started with Kevin, but had me worried when Woody's packaging didn't get it. And staying consistent with the other two releases so far, Wally also gets this amazing art treatment on the left side of the box here, this time in a bold yellow color. And once again, here are all the boxes together. Kevin is number 00, Woody is number 01, and Wally again is number 02. Just look at all these colors. No doubt the boxes are display worthy as well. On the right side of the box, you can pause and read it if you haven't yet, this is the exact same snippet about Mattel's Pixar Spotlight series found on every release in this line. And here's the top of the packaging once again, and like usual, there's the Pixar and Spotlight series logos on either side, as well as a Pixar ball cutout to kind of help light the figure inside when on display. I gotta say, I absolutely love the yellow to burnt orange color scheme all over this box, it just might be my favorite yet. And here's the bottom there just to cover everything. Moving on to the back of the box, again it matches the other two in the series perfectly, now sporting all those vibrant yellow, gold, and burnt orange colors. The creator in sight this time is by Jay Schuster, who's a character and production designer at Pixar, who led the design of Wally himself, as well as environment and set design for the film. Jay's contributed his work to many Pixar films since 2002, and I've admired his work for some time now, so it's really cool to see him featured here. And here it shows off the included reversible backdrop as usual, as well as some great stills of the figure highlighting some of Wally's poses and all of the fantastic accessories he comes with. So I'm actually thinking that this is my favorite overall packaging presentation in the series so far, and surprisingly maybe my favorite of the figures as well, which I did not expect. More on that throughout the video, but yeah, I'm definitely curious as to what you guys think. And I'm sure you're curious, how and why on earth is this video so long? I also thought that Wally would be the simplest and quickest to review, but I was so wrong. He actually turned out to be the most complex and intricate in the series, and I had a hard time trimming things down any further. I try to keep my videos 10 minutes or under, but there's just so much to cover here. I really hope that you enjoy all the details I'm about to go into. I didn't want to miss a thing. Now, before diving into the figure and all the accessories, here's the included Pixar Spotlight Series concept art card. Again, definitely a thinner cardstock material this time compared to Woody's, but either way, here's some classic concept artwork by Jay Schuster of Wally just chillin', pondering about life, and once again, I have to note that the date is wrong. Not only is this not even the year the film came out this time, it's also not the year this concept art is dated. This art is actually from 2005, so yeah, I just had to add that slight correction there. Okay, now onto the accessories here. First, we have the iconic boot plant that everyone's familiar with, and of course, this set would not be complete without it. It's a very nice sculpt, very accurate looking, and is just straight plastic with no paint or weathering deco. It's very comparable to the one included with the 2008 and re-release of Thinkway Toys Search and Protect E figure, and the one with the Reveltech Wally figure. Next, we have the by and large fire extinguisher that Wally uses to propel himself through space after ejecting out of one of the Axiom's life pods, and this is another great little accessory of a memorable prop. Really accurate detail. Again, very similar to the one included with the 2008 Thinkway Toys Space Adventure Wally -E figure and the one that comes with the Japanese Reveltech Wally. -E. It is hollow inside, but it's a very sturdy plastic overall. And I'm so excited about this one, guys, since I believe this is the very first Wally -E by and large cooler accessory in this scale or otherwise that we've ever gotten that opens. There was a smaller version of this cooler that Thinkway did back in 2008 with a little pack called Wally -E in Awe, which also came with Eve, but I think that's the only other Wally -E toy cooler we've ever gotten. Overall, this is a cool little accessory to have. It's all plastic with no paint. It would have been nice to have the by and large logo there colored and or some painted or digitally printed weathering, but it's certainly good enough. I love that you can put the other accessories inside the cooler and another feature I'll be sharing coming up that's one of my favorite aspects of this whole figure. 
And here's the compacted garbage cube accessory, and I'm really happy that one of these came with Wally here. It again has a very detailed sculpt, is a good toy representation of the trash cube scene in the film, and is a single gray plastic color. Again, some additional coloring or weathering would have been a nice touch, but the sculpt itself is certainly detailed enough for me. You may remember that some trash cube accessories also came with the Thinkway Toys 2008 Cube and Stack Wally figure and the Japan Reveltech Wally figure, but this one might have the best look overall. And of course, Wally's cockroach friend had to be included. Good job, Mattel. And by the way, fun fact, it's never said in the film, but this little guy's name is Hal. I really like the sculpt. Again, it's just a solid brown plastic sculpt, no paint application, but this character is very minimal in his appearance anyway. It doesn't need much more than this at all. I believe the only other Wally figure to come with Hal is the Japanese Reveltech Wally, but honestly, I prefer the look of this one here. I just feel that it captures the character better overall. This simple little accessory here takes the place of Wally's head when swapping out the pieces to transform Wally into more of his full-on cube appearance seen here in this screenshot. It's essentially just like the top panel cover. It's got some nice weathering details and can easily pop in and out of Wally's head socket, which I'll demonstrate in just a minute. Next up, we have the alternative head that he comes with, and this one sits a bit lower on his body so that you can reenact when Wally is like mid-transformation or when he's peeking out of his cube, which happens a ton during the film when he's nervous or hiding, so I'm so glad this look was included. Something I have to point out here, and the same goes for his standard head, which I'll look at in more detail soon, is how amazing the eyes are. This aspect of the figure is flawless. There are two points of articulation in the neck here. His head can rotate 360 and can be moved backward and forward. And then they've added some of Wally's top panels over the eyes here, which is accurate for this look since in the film, they kind of transform or fold out from behind the eyes when he's transitioning. So that's pretty cool. Some nice details all around. And I should also note that the eyes and this expression are locked in place. They can't be moved individually like you'll see with the standard head. Next up, if this is the first Spotlight Series review you're watching from me, this is the display stand that the figures come with. It's got that really cool minimal Pixar ball design. It's black and shiny, really sleek, but yeah, this is the same stand that comes with every Pixar Spotlight Series figure. Alrighty, everyone, let's finally get this figure out of its bubble blister here. I just cut off several little plastic ties holding Wally in place, and here he is in hand. Now it's time to get him to his standard look to check out every possible detail. Hang on, it's gonna be a ride. First off here, I'm gonna get right back into just how much I love how his eyes were done now that I have the standard head attached. I just really appreciate the work that went into making them look so realistic, especially for this scale figure. Notice the lenses are clear plastic giving off a true glass appearance and the eyes behind the lenses are sculpted and not just printed or anything. Just wow, I feel like with most Wally figures, the eyes are just painted black. So this is seriously next level stuff. All the dirt, dents, and weather details around his main cube, including his logo, are digitally printed on, which is really cool. Nothing is actually painted and there's no paper stickers. His charge level is at 100%, just like when Wally starts a new day in the film. And just a fun fact in case you missed it in the film, Wally actually stands for Waste Allocation Load Lifter Earth Class. So remember that next time for when it comes up in some Disney Pixar trivia. Now onto his arm articulation and movement. What's super awesome about this figure is I believe this is the first Wally figure ever to have actual arm tracks on the side here to roll his arms side to side and up and down the side of his body just like in the film. The arms are on little wheels within the track there and they do roll even if it isn't the smoothest system. Regardless, this is an amazing and unique feature. So let's just go ahead and move the treads out of the way so that you can see you can move the arm all the way down like so. And even if the bottom part of the track doesn't extend all the way back like it should, Mattel did at least add a little indent and printed track there so it has the complete look. Moving to the points of articulation in his arms, they can rotate all the way around. He's got a hinge joint there at the elbow. This of course is all applicable to both sides. His wrist can rotate 360. His hand, I guess what would be like his thumb, can open and close and it doesn't stop there. His wrist also has some hinge action there to add some flexion and his arm can pull out and extend just like his hydraulic arms in the film. For the other side, I'm just going to go rapid speed here since, like I said, he's got the exact same articulation in both arms. Next up is his tread articulation, and they're also on hinges so that they can fold out in this unique way, which is really good for posing them out in lots of different ways. They can easily extend down like this and can just as easily snap back into place. See, just notice that little lip there, push it up and you'll hear and feel it click, which means it's nice and secure there. Same on the other side and there. Underneath here, there's more of that superb printed weathering, and as you already noticed, the treads aren't true working rolling treads, but they do have wheels so Wally can be pushed around. And what's really neat is that you can also extend both of Wally's treads and pose him at different heights, so notice the little notches there for the height points. This height here is basically as far as they can go before popping out. 
As far as the neck, head, and eyes area, there's another hinge joint there at the neck base, allowing for some back and forth movement. That joint is also on a rotating plate so that it can turn a full 360 degrees as well. The head and eyes there at the top can also rotate all the way around and they can move up and down like this. Both eyes have articulation and can move independently from one another so that you can give Wally all those brilliant expressions seen in the film. It's really amazing just how much of Wally's personality stems literally just from the eye movements alone. So it's really cool that this figure lets you play around with that. Let's take a look at the back now, which actually has what's probably my favorite feature here with this figure, and that's the little hook that pops out so that Wally can be displayed carrying his lunch cooler. Now, it's a little tricky to pop out. I tried several methods over like 10 minutes and had the most success with just a standard safety pin. Whatever you use, you definitely need something because you cannot pop this thing out with just your fingers. And if you can, huge kudos. Moving along, here's a closer look at the sides of the treads. Really excellent sculpting details there of all the mechanisms. And you Wally fans are gonna love this feature. My other favorite aspect of this figure is that his front not only opens up to put his trash cube inside, but his whole top part is also on a hinge so that it can lift up as well, just like how he operates in the film. Again, I think this is the very first figure to open up like this. Other figures in the past, like Thinkway's Cube and Stack Wally, you were only ever able to open the front compartment. Just another example of how Mattel really took things up a few notches here. Now for the next little portion of the video, I'm going to show off just how Wally interacts with all his included accessories, starting off here with the trash cube and how it can be placed inside his compacting area. You can place the boot inside as well, just like in the film, and there's even enough room to close things up. And we wouldn't want Hal to get compacted here, of course, but just an example of how he can fit inside as well. Wally can also hold the by and large fire extinguisher accessory, which I'm happy about, and he can hold Hal the cockroach perfectly, which makes for one of the cutest ways you can possibly display these figures. And yep, he can hold the boot as well, which also looks fantastic and straight out of the film. And this is the feature I was talking about earlier with how Wally's cooler can hang on this little hook here on the back, which is just too stinking cool, guys. This is right out of the movie. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm certain that this is the first Wally figure that's able to do this. Next up, I just removed the main head so I can show you his more shy or scared sunken in look with the second head here that's included. Both heads can be removed and inserted fairly easily, and there you go. I absolutely love this look. This is just so Wally to me. Very in character. So what I'm going to do now is essentially just start shrinking Wally down by removing his parts so that we'll just be left with his straight up cube self. His arms can be removed easily, just like this, and then we're left with this look here, which is another good one straight out of several moments in the film. And then the treads can also easily be removed by giving each one of them a good tug like this. We're then left with this look here of just his eyes peeking out of his cube body and nothing else. Again, you can point out many times when he looks specifically just like this in the movie. And now for the final look, we'll pop off his secondary head here and snap the panel covering onto the top here. And here's Wally's completed tucked away into his cube like a turtle look. You'll remember he goes into this mode when he's either hiding, sleeping, or being defiant. There's a bunch of times. Really cool that you can break him down all the way to his simplest appearance. And by the way, the easiest way to pop off the panel when you're done with this look, since it's completely flat, is just by pushing through from the inside. It will come right off. This is actually the best way to get any of the heads off as well. And I just wanted to show here, just in case anyone was wondering, you can't push his arms all the way in or his hands in these little designated spots here. You can't put them in flesh so that he's part of the cube. Um, they kind of just hang out on the outside like that, but it's close enough to his final compacted look. It just would have been a cool feature if they could be pushed in all the way. And just another example here of how you can mess with the eyes to give him different expressions. We have what I'd consider more of the traditional Wally look here, and this is kind of more of the serious factory reset look. Here's Wally on the Pixar ball base looking phenomenal, and I love that he has peg holes under his treads that can be connected to the pegs on the stand for that added stability, even though he can stand just fine on his own. In addition to those peg holes underneath his treads, I already mentioned that he also does have wheels, so you can push him around. I wanted to demonstrate that rolling action here real quick. And I know it would have made things a little bit more complex, but at least some rubber treads that could move when pushing Wally along would have been even more off the charts. Switching gears a little now as I wrap things up, here's a closer and clearer look at the spotlight background for this figure, which is that really nice yellow, orangey, gold color scheme consistent with the rest of the box. And this time around, it features Eve's plant symbol as the spotlighted image. And as far as the reverse side, there's always a more movie still inspired image. And for this one, it's the trashed city streets where Wally obviously works day in and day out at the start of the film. And once again, this is a really beautiful backdrop to display the figure against. The figure really pops here with this one. One. For the first time though, I'm not sure which one I like better since I actually really love the minimal spotlight background this time as much or more than the reverse side. So what do you think? Which one is your preference here? 
And before getting into my final thoughts, I couldn't not share this comparison here of Mattel's Spotlight Wally with Mattel's standard $10 7 inch scale core Wally figure, as I know many of you have been curious. Both stand at around 3.5 inches tall. Also, here's Mattel's standard core 7 inch scale E figure from last year with the Spotlight Wally, and they actually look really solid together and seem to be decently in scale with one another, which is good since I'm not sure a Spotlight Eve is even in the works. If you made it this far into the video, congrats, count me impressed, and thank you so much for sticking with me here. Oh, and speaking of thanks, I failed to mention this at the start, but a huge, huge thank you to my friends over at Mattel for sending this my way so that I could have this wonderful opportunity to be one of the first to share my thoughts on this incredible figure. Now for the last minute or two, enjoy these scene-specific inspired poses I was able to achieve with this figure, and once again, like any of the others in this line, this is literally just scratching the surface of what you can do. He has so much posability, I honestly haven't even counted every single point of articulation. There are so many ways that you can pose out this figure, especially with all his accessories. It would be impossible to capture all of them here. So I just wanted to give you a small taste of what you can expect and maybe even provide some ideas for when you're posing him for your display, some toy photography, or even a stop motion video. I mean, honestly, I've done a lot of talking here, but when it comes down to it, this figure speaks for itself. You guys don't need me to sell this to you. Just take one look at it, and I think any big Wally fan would be completely thrilled to add this to their collection. Again, for this price point of $40 and this scale, in my opinion, I don't think there is any better Wally figure out there. There have been a lot of Wally figures made since 2008, and very few, if any, have even come close to the accuracy of this one. Sure, if you're a diehard fan who knows the ins and outs of Wally, I know you'll find plenty of nitpicky things that you would do differently. Kind of like how I shared some thoughts on maybe adding some working treads, more painted weathering on the figure and accessories, among some others, but in the end, the Mattel team did everything they could, working within the limitations of this size and retail price, to craft a figure that Wally collectors and Pixar fans would be proud to own and display. This is a figure made by fans for fans and has my strongest Dan the Pixar fan recommendation and seal of approval. And it wouldn't be the end of this epic Spotlight Series review trilogy without a quick look at the complete first wave of Pixar Spotlight Series figures together. I love them all so much, but yeah, Wally has completely won me over, and I do think he's taken the number one spot here for me personally. As I've mentioned, these will be up for pre order very soon through Mattel's online shop and will be shipping this fall just in time for the holidays. Each one retails for $40. I'm looking forward to your comments down below, and if you did enjoy this unboxing, please consider giving it a big thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more Pixar merch reviews just like this from my personal collection. Find me all over social media, and I will see you in my next video.